Josh, where's where's the campsite? It's coming up just ahead over there. Are you scared of the dark? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But I'm with my friends. I'm okay. <laughs> Field of Geeks presents The Super Super Unknown I'm Josh I'm Juan And I'm Dave It's good to be back and we're sorry it's been a while But today, hopefully we'll make up for it We're going to be talking ghosts the people upstairs, the reporter who knew too much, and Bigfoot. Dave, you're up first. So mine was actually, uh, it comes from my parents. They, uh, when they first got married years and years ago, they were living in this small house. So the way it was laid out is that um, their bedroom was at the top of the stairs, right? So it was like the only door at the top of these stairs was there. It was kind of a door to their bedroom, right? Because it was a pretty small house back in England, right? Every night they'd hear the sounds of somebody coming up the stairs. <laughs> yeah, so it'd be like a step each, like you'd hear it, boom, 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 coming up the stairs, and then every night, at the, when it got to the top, then the door would kind of slowly open. Oh my god. But every night, there wasn't anything there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I mean, I asked my dad, I said, come on. Mom's just trying to mess with me. You know, mom, mom has, mom has a tendency to be, you know, virgin mom, hyperbolic. But uh, <laughs> you know, she, uh, no, but he's like, no, it, it's true. It happened. It's like it was really weird. I couldn't figure it out. So like every, uh, every, every day. I'm not proud enough to say that I, I would just, I would laugh. Right. I don't know. Like, nope. <laughs> but if for some, I mean, yeah, you know me, man. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm not only really like, oh, it's ghost, but no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'd just been out. I'd been like, I don't care if we're going to lose money on this house. If we're leaving. <laughs> or just bolt the door, maybe. <laughs> just get extra locks for it. And just... Oh, it's just, yeah, but imagine that, like, the first night, right? If you just didn't know, you would have been like, oh, my God, somebody's coming up the stairs. Oh, and then the door just opens Ooh. and you'd be like uh nope <laughs> no right did they ever look uh, up history of the house like nope. previous owners uh-uh, not happening I wouldn't really like your parents so your parents were never curious to be like hey what what happened here before no you know what I wouldn't I wouldn't even want to know <laughs> how long did they stay in the house <laughs> Got until they have to upgrade, I think. A few years at least. Oh yeah. So they got yeah, they just yeah. got used well, to it. They're like, maybe. oh, it's the ghost. <laughs> Good night, ghost. <laughs> right. Jesus. Exactly right. It's just like, oh well, whatever. I'd be locking that door down and putting some bear traps on the stairs just to make sure. <laughs> Are you trying to provoke things? I wouldn't mess with it. Oh, uh, like it's probably true. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, the ghost would probably pick them up. You, it, it'd probably pick them up and like lay them other places around the house. <laughs> Get up in the morning. <laughs> yeah, go brush your teeth. Holy shit! Nope. That's insane. Kind of one of the worst freaking ideas to experience ever. Maybe experience. that's what you should do to distract yourself is from the the fear of the ghost. Put your foot in a bear trap, and it takes your mind off of it quickly. Oh, it'll clearly clear the mind. Oh, it'll definitely clear the mind. <laughs> Screw the ghost. Clear the mind. That's insane. Yeah, because, you know, your mind plays a lot of tricks on you. It goes places. Like, when my wife and I moved into our house, we heard noises, but it's just the house itself. As far as we can tell, we haven't really had a an incident or anything, but that'd be definitely more than what we experienced. We just heard a little few creaks, and that's about it, and that was, like, in the attic, and... Probably some somebody's living up there. We, we still haven't talked to them, but they they left us alone. So um, coming up the stairs, door opening, dark. Oh, nope, hard pass. <laughs> it sounds like a, actually a story I told uh, my roommate, another friend, recently. Sure. It's not 
it's not as uh, directly as creepy, but it's similar in the sense of thinking you're hearing things that aren't necessarily true. Yeah. So when I lived in Iowa City during my college years, me and uh, me and my friend had a apartment that we lived at for like four years, and the, the name of the building was the Belmont. It just was. So we that just, sounds creepy. Be like, hey, going to, you know what I'm saying? But the it was Belmont. just a regular college apartment, the Belmont. You know, we'd always go back to the Mont. You'll never after, leave. You know, the bar is closed. Yeah. So here's what happened. Um, we had, were up and down that first two years that there were three people that lived above us. So my understanding was there was a couple with a guy and a girl and another male roommate. They would literally fight almost three or four times a week. You crazy son of you know, son of a gun, you <laughs> I'll kill you, you you know <laughs> capital C and yeah. and blah 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 and they would just battle every other night. And like my roommate are like, man, I don't know what to do, man. I don't wanna I don't her boyfriend sounds crazy. Like <laughs> I was the same way. I was like, this dude sounds like the type that'll like stab you in your sleep, like sneak in your home or something. Stuff. So it was just kind of creepy. And so, long story short, I'm like, we were like, yeah, the other guy, I never hear him talk. I heard him talk like two or three times, you know, but the other two would always be arguing. So, my band, we didn't have a practice space at this time. So, we decided to practice in our apartment. And we had our drummer use digital drums. So, it wasn't like loud percussion. Mm -hmm. And uh, we already had talked to uh, everybody, but I guess he wasn't. At home, everybody in the building, like, can we practice for these hours? And they're like, yeah, that's fine. You know, blah, blah, blah. Sure. And it was before, you know, like, 9 o'clock or something, like, or 8 o'clock or something. So, one day we get a noise complaint. The cop comes to the door. He's like, hey, uh, you guys got to figure out a way to keep the noise down. I was like, oh, I thought we had agreed. And he was like, well, you can go talk to him. I'll go with you, the people upstairs. And I was like, sure. So I go upstairs, and this guy was like he's like bald and he's like kind of off and his eyes are twisted but like yeah they're so loud i can't hear the voices in my head and i go i look directly at the cop like just like do you see what I'm doing? <laughs> oh my god i didn't know that, that he had been arguing with the people in his head for two years whoa i had no clue because his voice would literally alter. Oh, There's only one person that lives there. Like a schizo kind no. of. No. <laughs> there was only one person that lived in that apartment. Oh my one. God. Oh, it's like split. Yeah. I'm serious. To a, to a T. To a T. Because one time I was at home, <laughs> and I thought he killed her. And she's like, because he goes, he goes, come here, you crazy. C word. And, he, and she goes, I'm not gonna take your mess anymore. And da 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 da. And then you hear the door slam. Ooh. And he's like beating on the door. I'm going by myself for my apartment. And then you hear the door open really fast. And then he's like, I'm gonna get you. And no, no, no. And then I just hear a big slam. Oh. And there's no. And I'm like, did someone just die? Did someone just get murdered? Oh my god. But I'm not. I mean, this is my me in my 20s, and I'm like. I'm not saying nothing. I don't want that guy <laughs> to identify me with anything. I don't want him to even know I was home. I, I you know. They're like, Juan, uh, Juan, you got to do the right thing. He's like, I'm not doing nothing. What? What happened? I, what? What? I was asleep. <laughs> what happened? There was a murder. Oh, oh my god! Like when he said it, it was like something out of like a. TV show or something. He's like, I couldn't hear the voices in my head, and I just looked at the cop, and the cop just was like, "Whoa!" Like, <laughs> I just looked at his face. I didn't even look at the guy anymore. I didn't want to make eye contact with him. Wow. So he creeped so, you out. Oh yeah. I was like, Norman Dates lives above me. I'm not. I'm not. No. Mm -mm. You're like, oh, I'm packing my bags. Want... Yeah, I was like, yeah, we'll definitely turn the music down. No worries. Not a problem. <laughs> It's not a not a problem at all. 
Like, <laughs> I know it's just some random story, but like, you know, like the guy was really all about like the voices in his head. Like, and I'm not, I know that's a mental disorder and I'm not trying to poke fun sure, at that. Sure, of course. That. I'm just, yeah. I'm just saying like, oh, oh, oh. It, it, how do you address something like that? Like where it, <laughs> cause right. I thought it was like a couple. I really did. Like, <laughs> my friends thought it was a couple. He sold that car. Like, split. He sold that car. Like, I, when I just saw this very large man, balling, cross-eyed, and he's, you know, and he's like, the oh, like, like Josh. Yeah. Yeah, he was, yeah. It was me, actually. <laughs> I got the yeah. eye fixed. <laughs> I got the eye fixed. I, I don't have a family. He might be a relative, Josh. I don't know. He might be a relative. No, it's me. I, I don't have but. wife and kids. It's all me. It's all me. <laughs> I'm following you, Juan. Oh, this guy. Was he, he knows that you know he killed his girlfriend now, Juan. <laughs> what girlfriend? There's a girlfriend. <laughs> I'm pretty shit. What girlfriend? Makes you, <laughs> makes you wonder though if if it was actually if it actually happened you know in the past and he was reliving it or something or I don't know. That's bizarre. Well, here's what I think. Here's my after living there for four years and him living there three and a half of those years. Mm -hmm. Here's what I really think. I think the third roommate. I think those three entities lived in are in his mind, existed in his mind from his point of view. Mm. I think that third roommate that rarely would talk, I think that was his true self. Oh. And so, oh, maybe, like, he's going through some type of scenarios that he experienced maybe in, through childhood. Oh, sure. Who knows? Yeah, that could be. Oh, yeah, he could be mimicking his parents, reenacting. And he's, like, the child that's quite quiet. easily. Yeah, I could, I could yeah, see he's that. Yeah, like, he's like, hey, guys, can you keep it down? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, that's the type of stuff you would say. So that's Kinda why like, I thought uh, it was like, okay, there's three roommates. Did you guys ever see Identity? Yes. Just like that guy. Yeah. It was just like that guy. Really? He looked exactly like that guy. <laughs> it's his it's life story. What about you, Dave? Have you seen Identity? With John Cusack, right? So. Yeah, it's like... Old movie with John Cusack? It's got a big twist. You can't tell them the story, Josh. I know. I yeah, you can't tell the story. It's a right? huge it, twist. It, it'll... Huge. It kills the movie. We're talking six cents twist. It's, it's it's big. It's big. Six cents was garbage. Well, okay. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. I forgot. I forgot you didn't. You weren't a fan of that. I think you'll like this twist better. I think you like this twist better. M Night Shyamalanata, whatever his name is, Shyamalan. He's like, oh, it's a big twist. No, it isn't. I saw that coming from the beginning. That was pretty much his have M.O. Seen? after Sixth Sense. Like, every movie had to have a twist. Every movie. Yeah, like, oh, you thought it was, uh, you thought <laughs> they were in the past, but it's actually modern day, and they just don't have anyone else, you know, like, any technology allowed. You can't just be like, oh, they were Amish the whole time. Yes. <laughs> what a dumb movie. Well, then there was more questions Can like, you, um, how, how do you um, hide planes flying overhead? You know, all that stuff. I guess they had a no restriction or something. But still, <laughs> something's going to happen, right? Like right? one little like, thing of land. That, they're like, oh, you can't even fly over this. <laughs> what, why? Well, you know. What about the trilogy? The Unbreakable and Split and Mr. Glass. What did you think of those? Or have you seen all three? I've only seen the first one. one. I thought you seen Split. I didn't. Oh, it's excellent. I mean, it's the best of the three. Well, there you go, Dave. There's, there's hope. <laughs> they get better. <laughs> Maybe. They'd have to. Jesus. <laughs> well, Split, uh, because of the acting yes. in Split, it's executed so well, in mm -hmm. my opinion, yeah. that it, you're captivated by the acting. Right. The story is cool, too. And then you learn that they're all connected. James McAvoy, I think, is uh, his name. He's really McAvoy, good. Yeah. He's a good actor. Yeah, I remember seeing yeah. that seeing that preview. I was like, This oh. is the movie that made me like him the most. Really? He's got some good movies. I mean, this is 
this is his best role in my opinion. He committed, Hands yeah. Down. I think most of us here are obsessed with the JFK assassination, all the conspiracy theories that, you know, revolve around it, you know, possible cover-ups, who did it, who was involved, all that. When you hear the JFK assassination, what are your thoughts? The conspiracy theorist to me is kind of like, well, we should know better not to expose our president like that. Go out in public? I don't know. The convertible top uh-huh. down? Uh-huh. Yeah. Like it was a setup, right? <laughs> it just, because I, I can't recall any president before, prior to that, who's ever exposed themselves like that. And obviously there's, there's stuff that we don't have visually documented of like a president being out in the public, but there's always someone who doesn't like a president. Of course. There's always someone who doesn't like whoever's in office. Or there's always someone. Or an organized, you know, group of people who want to get mm-hmm. rid of the president. That's one of the many theories about this whole assassination, how, you know, how and why it took place. So what do you... What do you think about, Dave, when you hear JFK assassination? Contrary to popular belief, but a uh, slight plot twist, he was dead the whole time. What? Uh, dun, dun, dun. What? Shyamalan twist? <laughs> <laughs> An M. Night Shyamalan film. <laughs> do, you, do you think there was a conspiracy? No, I don't know. I mean, there's a conspiracy to kill every president, right? Yeah, pretty much. Um, Reagan was the last president to have an assassination attempt, and it was like by that one dude who had the book Catcher in the Rye. Uh, Jared Leto played him. Didn't in he do it for Jodie Foster? Yeah, something like that too. Yeah, there's something about that. He was in love with her. Yeah, that was a that was the last big attempt we had. That's kind of creepy. Yeah, Good that time. was. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, you'd have to feel pretty bad. Uh, right, if somebody got shot, yeah. Sorry about that. How do you address that? Oh. Like, uh, <laughs> do I send you flowers or what do I do? You know, if they live, of well, course. Well, because I know, theory... especially it's like the, the the president, right? You're like, oh man, um, not bad. <laughs> Nowadays, it just wouldn't happen because you've got so much monitoring. True. Well, the conspiracy uh, theory on Reagan is that he actually did get killed, and they replaced him with a clone. Whoa. Just telling conspiracy theories. <laughs> Stir in the pot. Stir in the pot. Oh, shit. So he was dead the whole time. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Shyamalan was right. His parent, <laughs> no, his parents replaced him at birth. There you go. Uh, oh. Reagan was an actor. <laughs> Not a good oh, one. Man. Yeah, he was an actor. Yep. He was an actor. 50s actor. Maybe he was that good. Maybe it was his stunt man. President. Maybe there, maybe there's a cloning machine, and every president has ten copies. Each one slightly worse than the other because it's like multiplicity. You know, you you got your one that's yeah, just like, well, hi, Steve. But yeah, my my topic is about a reporter who covered many <clears throat> things in her career. JFK was pretty much the last big thing she reported on. Her name was Dorothy Ma Killigan, and she had a public persona she reported on organized crime politics show business you know gossip so she's in the public eye a lot you know she couldn't just walk into a room without people not knowing who she was anytime she would go after a certain topic you know it definitely was a lot of tension with that there was a book written about her called the reporter who knew too much and it's by mark shaw so it's very fascinating I first stumbled upon this subject when I was on YouTube, and um, she was on this this game show back in the 50s, 60s, and it was called What's My Line? They had a clip, and it was um, it was after she passed away. All the panelists had to, you know, address it. It's just how it would be now if someone passed away on a, a TV show, especially like, you know, a news show or a game show. So yeah, I found that very interesting, so I I did some digging. Uh, She did a lot in her career. There was a Sam Shepard trial that sparked a lot of attention. He was a neurosurgeon convicted of murdering his wife, and she argued against his guilty verdict. Her her written works helped him 
get out of prison eventually in 1966. So he served 10 years prison time. So she had a, you know, a reputation for just kind of like the truth, justice, and I guess the American way you can say. JFK assassination happens. It's uh, November 22nd, 1963. Kennedy is killed in Dallas. And then, of course, the Warren Commission is uh, assembled to gather intelligence on what happened. Uh, members would observe testimony and uh, eyewitness accounts. And, of course, any evidence. It was established by President uh, Lyndon B. Johnson. And the report was released in September 24th, 1964. So, like, you know a year, almost a year after his death. So yeah, the report, for those who don't know, said that Oswald acted alone. He killed Kennedy. Also Jack Ruby, who killed Oswald on live television, which imagine seeing that now, like that's that's just insane. For the for the nineteen sixties, like, you know, it's just crazy how a lot knew where they were at the time when Kennedy was killed, what they were doing, just kind of like 9-11. You know, any big tragedy, everyone remembers where they were. They also remember Jack Ruby killing Oswald. So, yeah, that had to mess up some kids. And, I mean, just anyone in general, really, because it's not really like a normal thing. Television was, I don't know, 20 years old at that time. And, yeah, it's just uh, craziness. But the Warren Commission findings were very controversial to some and it challenged and supported and was supported by later studies. Dorothy, of course, was skeptical of the reporting before the commission report was officially released. She did publish an article. She got to speak with Jack Ruby and it happened while um, there was a recess in the trial. And Ruby was sitting at a defense table. So she had a conversation with him and published that conversation. It contradicted everything that was said about him and his involvement. And she also published Ruby's testimony in the papers, and everything appeared to be open and shut, and he pleaded insanity. On the day of assassination, Ruby was around the area where Kennedy was killed, and there, many witnesses saw him. Many say he knew about the assassination before it happened, you know, because he was kind of thrown into the hero spotlight for what he did, you know, killing Oswald, because, you know, a lot of people were mad. But turns out, most likely, he was paid to do that. Uh, after all of this came around, the commission report was sent out there. Dorothy was all of a sudden found dead, November 8th, 1965. The causes were what, what they determined was alcohol in her system, and I'm probably going to butcher this, but uh, barbiturate, which is a central nervous system depressant. Just like the JFK case... <coughs> Kind of seemed like an open and shut door, right? She just mixed things and passed away in her sleep. You know, that happens. Celebrities, it happens with. And normal people, of course. You can't ignore the enemy she made during her reporting. The commission report, it was pretty much like, you know, hey, let's get back to, you know, regular lifestyles in this country. You know, we, we solved the case. You know, it's pretty much anything that comes out now is questioned. Like I say, there's a 9-11 commission report. Uh, a lot of people question that. And I don't think you'll ever get a report that's satisfying to everyone, even if, even if it's uh, correct. Uh, you have so many conspiracy theorists now. You just can't help it. You know, the mind wanders like, you know, she was a reporter, so she knew things and people wanted to shut her up, I'm sure. But yeah, over her career, she did make some enemies. Uh, Frank Sinatra is one of them. They were friends and she wrote a big um, article on him called the Frank Sinatra story, had some installments, and he wasn't a big fan of that, of course. And Cleveland newspaper, going back to the Shepard case, she basically brought attention to their justice system's flaws and just kind of put them in a bad light. And of course, the Warren Commission, you know, you could have made some enemies there questioning what events uh, actually happened. But yeah, when she was found dead, uh, she was in her Manhattan townhouse. The author of the book, the reporter who knew too much, he claims Dorothy was poisoned. There was three lethal drugs involved, and perhaps it was ministered by her mistress at the time. Maybe a spy for the FBI, mafia, or both. I mean, you had, you know, at that time you had Jay or Hoover, just a bunny, bunch of nutty guys that we now know <laughs> were nutty. 
uh, you know, power trips and all that stuff. So it just makes you wonder, like, did she really die of natural causes? I mean, not natural, but, you know, just an accidental overdose or an intentional overdose. Or was she killed? I, I think I'm leaning towards she was killed. I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, it makes sense. When you create a lot of enemies, what do you expect? Right. Now I think about it. Nothing ever feels simple, whether it's true or not, about someone, especially someone like her who had a lot of, you know, enemies and, you know, she just, she was a brave reporter. Like, I, I couldn't do that job. That's just so much um, pressure and risk. People who were going to be affected by this, you know, they, they would do anything to uh, avoid it, including have someone killed. So you could say that about JFK. I mean, there's just all kinds of theories out there. And I know growing up, you know, I simply thought, oh, yeah, Oswald acted alone because that's what my grandparents told me. But, yeah, after I grew older and just saw a lot of um, harsh facts out there, really, in, in the world, you know, what people have done in the past and keep doing. Yeah, it's uh, it's just I don't buy the sugar-coatedness of all of this, you know. So many crazy things about the JFK assassination. Oliver Stone did a movie years back, JFK. I don't know if you guys saw it, but it definitely, um, you know, it was kind of, it was fictionalized, but there were some things thrown in there that, you know, actually were reported and talked of, and that movie helped bring it to the limelight more, changed my perspective on the whole situation. Dorothy was actually one of the initial 500 persons chosen to receive a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. You know, a friend of hers wrote about her legacy saying, you know, she was she was a crime reporter whose uh, work was overlooked during her lifetime and sadly forgotten after her death. A good reporter is to be anonymous, to stay out of the story so that they can better watch and study and listen to principles. Dorothy couldn't because people knew who she was. It's crazy, you know? I don't think it's a problem that's gone away. I think a lot of people get silenced, you know, one way or another. Who knows, maybe she was offered money, but she seemed like a person who always wanted to do the right thing. And uh, yeah, she just chose that over possible consequences. It's a lot of little stories within stories in that one. Mm -hmm. like, uh just so many different ways of approaching it. Like, I think uh, she kind of put herself in the line of fire, if you ask me, you know, just by how she was approaching things. And, and that's kind of like the nature of a reporter in general. Of course, yeah. That's what you sign up to do. Yeah, you're going to piss a lot of people off. Definitely. Especially local people. And There's no way I would have done it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, right. I mean, I get nervous when I'm just driving and I see cops. Right. I know the feeling. You know, is everything good? You know, so there's no way I could do it. I'm sure a lot of reporters back off from doing things, and maybe they later on regret it in their life. They didn't have the career they wanted, but yeah, it's just kind of like a a fork in the road. You know, if you're gonna do the right thing and take risks, you're gonna go that route. If uh, you know you're gonna veer off course here and there. Uh, you know, possibly because she had the celebrity awareness. Maybe she felt that was kind of like a safety net, you know, for people not to touch her, not to go after her. Uh, and her being a woman, a lot of times women feel they can go a little further. I, I know for a fact with my old band, when we got a female manager, mm -hmm. she could go places that our male managers couldn't go just because she was pretty. I'm not saying there's an invincibility there, but... Mm -hmm. It's like she feels like, oh, yeah, I can go here, I can go there. Like, I'm a girl, I know how to get in any door. It, it feels like that's the type of person she was. She's like, she's just kind of fearless, and, you know, yeah, she was a woman, so she probably could not turn as many heads, per se, like, because, you know, they would know she's a reporter, but, like, you know, a lot of people back then were like, oh, women are they're beneath us they they you know she probably won't do a good job or she probably won't report on what actually is happening and they were wrong you know and they got scared and whoever ended up you know if that's true who knows maybe she just actually died uh accidental but yeah it seems very fishy you know especially for i assume she would not stop talking about the results of the warren commission report and she was silenced for that by 
by whom we don't know. So that's that's the big mystery right there. It's, uh, yeah, friends are probably like, shut up, shut up. Right. <laughs> like, I'll pay you. What are you doing? Here's 50 bucks. Shut up. Don't say anything. Well, yeah, she had, seemed to have good morals, but yeah, sadly, her life was cut short. I'd say it's a brave profession. It really is, you know, especially when you go after giants like that. Like, yeah, you're going to have to... Uh, I'm sure a lot of them have security yeah. now. Who knows, you know? But with social media, uh, maybe maybe people view that as a safety net, too. Like, hey, people know of me. I can go Facebook Live and, you know. Well, you can also go anonymous. Yeah. With, like, you know, nowadays, you know, you can just be like, you can just upload something Yeah. to the World Wide Web, and uh, there you go. Yeah, well... Okay. Uh, once uh, technology gets better, I could see reporters having like a avatar like that doesn't look like them or anything and they can feel free to report away and not suffer any consequences, you know. That'll be good or bad, you know, cuz you'll have you'll have people who are just trying to start shit that nothing's there, you know. But yeah, there's always goods and bads to things. I'm uh, interested to find out what Juan has to say. Bring bring us down Hello? from this uh, tragic event. <laughs> I want to bring it back to Iowa and, you know, our good old-fashioned, like, unsolved cases type thing, just sightings and stuff. So, I guess I'm a fan of Bigfoot. I like Bigfoot. I do, too. I like Bigfoot. This is kind of like a revisit to the topic of Bigfoot. So we talked about it, like, months back, but I'm anxious. I'm always anxious to talk about Bigfoot. If you guys go back and listen to the episode, it's pretty funny. Um, I think Dave and Juan just went off the rails of uh, what a big Bigfoot persona would do. I think we, I think we said he would be driving around in a truck with a... That does not sound like either of us, sir. Of course not. There was no. a difference between... I'm mistaken. Uh, what, what's the snow creatures called? Oh, Yeti? I can't remember. Oh, abominable snowmen. Oh, Yeti? yes. Yeti. Yep. Like, I, like I was saying, I think they're related, but they're not technically the same thing. You they kind of get like put into the same like, category. Here. Yetis are like... It'd be like tigers versus lions. Yeah, uh, yetis are the Asian variety, right? Yeah, they're not the same, mm -hmm. but they're, like, related. Right. Probably. That's what my, goal, my guess is. Sure. So this one is actually a Bigfoot sighting in Iowa. Ooh, I like it. Uh, in a... What? Otto Sin. O-T-T-O-S-E-N, Iowa. Otto Sin. Mm -hmm. Iowa. In 1978... Uh, the residents of Oxison, Iowa, uh, reported strange sights and sounds around town, especially in the forest. Hmm. Townfolk, ooh, I like that word. Townfolk. Townfolk. <laughs> Townfolk reported being awakened by strange screams and eerie high-pitched whistle and an eerie high-pitched whistle. But it didn't stop there. Cats showed up dead and mutilated, and hmm. people woke up up to dogs with their necks snapped. Damn. Many uh, townsfolk even reported seeing a large, hairy, man-like creature wandering around town. One woman reported that she was doing dishes one night when she looked up to see a pair of glowing red eyes outside the window mm. staring at her. After she screamed, the creature ran away. It was seen by several different townsfolk. I love that word. <laughs> on several different occasions. <laughs> but nobody even found out what exactly happened that year in 1978. Really? But it's like something that happened in Iowa, and I didn't know we, I didn't know we could get Bigfoot. <laughs> I'm excited. They travel. Well, you know what? If, tw if 2020 is something anyway, <laughs> we can have Bigfoot and hurricanes in Iowa. Hey, Bigfoot's here to save us, man. He's like uh There you go, he's a superhero. <laughs> he's like wants nothing to do with twenty twenty. <laughs> he's like hell boy. <laughs> it's a great phenomenon. My my brother just bought a new Jeep and what they do is they put a bunch of Bigfoot or Sasquatch, you know, that's another word, uh name for it. I guess on the Jeeps, the new Jeeps, they have all these like tiny Sasquatches, like they're they blend in right with the car paint. But it's just something they do. So I guess every car's got like 11 like scattered and it's not like you win a prize or anything if you catch them all or you see them all but yeah it's just funny how they're that fascination has even crept into you know cars <laughs> it's such a fascinating 
a fascinating thing. I like to think it's true. I imagine that lady was doing dishes and she had the she had a window right by her sink, you know, which I would never, if I had a window by my sink, I would have that damn curtain shut all the time. Like, I don't want to look up and see anything. Like, fuck that. Like, <laughs> especially glowing eyes. I, I would just some... be like, what the fuck? It's crazy that the Bigfoot creature wasn't startled by, like, dogs' screams or cats' meows. It was always, it was always a person's, you know, from their accounts, you know, it was turned off by humans screaming, probably because they're about the same size or close to, yeah, you would think they'd be afraid of dogs and cats and things like that, but... Well, they said about the cats were mutilated, the dogs they fed in next nap. Odd. They must not really like cats. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Sasquatch does not like cats. Well, it's, it's odd, like, though, like... Dogs, it's like, wow, dog, snap, that's done. That's it's actually a a, a a merciful kill, but like right. the cat is like, uh, uh, no, <laughs> like you're, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna destroy you, buddy. Like, what the hell is like, this thing? I'm gonna take this a step. I'm gonna take this a step further. <laughs> yeah, like you know what I'm saying? It's an extra, it's an extra form of hatred put there, compared to like the yeah. dog. The dog, the dog is just, oh, there you go, <laughs> done. I'm not encouraging any of this, but I'm just saying, it's done. They probably just got tired but of playing cat. fetch. You know, he's like, God, you want to, oh my God, crack. Like, no more no more throwing the stick. <laughs> and then cats probably just yeah. crawl over them and, you know, dig their claws into them. Maybe that's Well, you know, cats are psychopaths themselves, too, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, just like attack you and bite you for no reason. Yeah. He probably just bit him for no reason. He's like... I actually love that. Do you that. know who I am? <laughs> he just punches it into I a tree. <laughs> I, I, I have a cat. One of those they are cats. different, though. <laughs> they are different. Cats are different, man. Yeah, I wonder if a lot of people go out there. Kind of like our very yeah. first episode, we did the... Um, Van Meter. Visitor. Yes, so I, I wonder if uh, people go to this town for the Bigfoot tracks, even though it's been decades. <laughs> Always... Ossosin. I've right. never even heard of Ossosin. I wonder if there's a statue there of uh, Bigfoot. That'd be funny. Just there with a big big flag. I think we should and... get a call out. I think we should get a... He's worth a shout out, I think. Shout out to all my Bigfoot. All my Sasquatch. <laughs> 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 There's a translator with him. He's like, uh, he broke your dog's necks and uh, mutilated your cats. Uh, we're going to be leaving. <laughs> that, that's not good. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> he doesn't care for cats. He really doesn't like cats at all. He got it He got it from Alf. Let's blame Alf. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yeah, Alf. Didn't he eat cats? He ate cats. That was dark, wasn't it? All these reboots they're doing, making things darker. They should do one on Alf. Just, you know. Eating, oh, just eating yeah. cats like wings, you know. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> Dipping them in barbecue sauce. <laughs> I, I think after the actual show series, they did a kind of a TV movie. Yeah. And uh, one of the jokes was he goes, uh, "Yes, the person." He goes, "What's the difference between toilet paper and a shower curtain?" The person's like, "I, I don't know." And he goes, oh, "It was you." <laughs> but I always found that pretty good. <laughs> oh, that's good. All oh, comes back to Elf. That's cool, though. I didn't. I didn't know we had a Bigfoot Absolutely. sighting here in Iowa. We should do some more digging for future topics around here. I bet there's some a lot of strange shit. We got a Mothman. We got a. We got Sasquatches. We got Captain Kirk's home. I mean, come we on, got man. a guy with multiple personalities up in Iowa City. <laughs> oh yeah. He's probably Hell still yeah. there. <laughs> we should put together like a travel brochure for Iowa. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. It be like Sasquatches, Mothman, Hurricanes. <laughs> Iowa's got it all. <laughs> we got it all. Corn. Hey, I even experienced floods here. Not the band. Here. <laughs> the vegetable corn. Yeah, but then you know the, you can be like you know uh, baseball playing ghosts. Oh, you got that. <laughs> oh fuck you! Yeah. Get fictionalized. There you go. I know we oh, should. That wasn't fiction, Josh. Oh, was it? Really was it an M. Night Shyamalan movie? It actually, it actually happened. Right? And uh, you, you ready for the twist for this podcast? What's that? 
I was dead the whole time. What? You were the ghost uh, I'm, I'm of the stairs in the door. Johnny God. Wahlberg got to me before the podcast started. <laughs> hey, Josh. <laughs> we're going to have to smoke that stuff again. Smoke that stuff again? <laughs> we had the same, we had the same hallucination. There you go. <laughs> Things exist to you, too. That's, I'm not alone. <laughs> <laughs> We're all up on the third floor of some building talking to ourselves. None of this is real. So. <laughs> None of this is real. We're all in one dude's head. Yes. We're just... Start the grill. Ooh. Well, what are we eating? <laughs> Imaginary <Cats>. uh, <laughs> Cats. Yeah. Mutilated, of course. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Best. I just got... I got a, I got a, just a ton of mutilated cats over here I need to get rid of. Oh, oh enjoy idiot. that. Enjoy that. Oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> we'll be back next time. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Da- Dave will bring some barbecue, hopefully, and uh, digital barbecue, that is. The feline persuasion. Yeah, there you go. Meow. <laughs> Kind <laughs> 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 of gamey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was fun. <laughs> I am Juan. I'm Josh. I'm Dave. Later. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye.